Good evening, uh, church family and friends. Hope that you're having a wonderful day, a wonderful week this week. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day and this time for this Bible study. God, open our eyes and our hearts, Lord, to accept your word. Father, forgive us where we fail thee. And Lord, again, we lift up those who are sick. We pray, God, for their souls to be healed, their bodies to be healed, and most of all, for that lost soul, God. Oh, God in heaven, I pray, Lord, they come to know you before it's too late. Bless our country. Bless our, our leaders, Lord. Uh, just uh, bring them all to the foot of the cross, first and foremost. And then our leaders would know how to lead, Lord, in a godly manner. But God, we thank you for this day. Bless us, Lord, as we get into your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we're in 2 Peter <clears throat> chapter 2 today, uh, verses 1 through 9. And our, our talk today, our study today is about false teachers. Uh, if the world ever needed a warning, uh, it needs it today about false teachers. Why? Because false teachers lead people uh, to doom themselves quicker than any single thing there, that there is, uh, according to scriptures. Too many people are too quick to believe anything, to believe a lie. Uh, why so? Most of them, they like to believe those things that will, uh, <clears throat> that will assure them of heaven or assure them of a great life, but at the same time, uh, would assure them that they can continue their life living in the manner in which they live and that's the big thing people want to continue doing their sins uh, they want God they want to be accepted by God uh, if there is a God in heaven they want to be accepted they want to go to heaven if there's a heaven uh, but at the same time they want to live like they want and so they'll believe a lie they'll believe a heresy and this dooms people to hell so let's read the scriptures verses 1 through 9 today of uh, second peter chapter two <clears throat> uh, but there were uh, false prophets also among the people even as they shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in dam damnable heresies even denying the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. <clears throat> and through the covetousness shall they uh, with feigned words make merchant, uh, merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time uh, lingereth not, and their dam damnation slumbereth not. For if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness, to be reserved into judgment, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overflow, making them an example unto those that after shall live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelleth among them, in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from, from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. False teachers. <clears throat> False teachers and prophets have always existed according to what we see in verse 1. And they, they will continue as long as the world stands. They have always carried on the destructive work and that's what it is when did the false prophets do their destructive work uh since since the beginning when did the false prophets move among the the people and introduce their destructive heresies note the, note the, the previous verse <clears throat> let's back up to chapter 1 uh, verse 21 here and this is what it said i'm gonna read uh, chapter 1 uh verse 21 and verse 1 of chapter 2 together it says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as they shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring them unto swift destruction. So the false prophets were at work while God was giving his word to man. <clears throat> Imagine, even while God was speaking and giving his word to men, there were some who were denying his word, 
uh, teaching destructive heresies and misleading the people. Uh, they were false prophets all throughout the Old Testament period, and they are still here today. Scripture makes it plain. They shall be false teachers among you. So they're here. <clears throat> we know they are. The ideal is that there will always be teachers or false teachers. Teachers will fill every generation of man, and, and they will continue to introduce their own destructive heresy until God comes back, until the Lord comes back and sets up his kingdom. So what do we do? We must therefore be alert, uh, alert to whatever men and women are teaching. This does not mean that, that we should uh, be on a witch hunt, but it, but it does mean that we are to test their, uh, all their teachings and their preachings uh, by the word of God. Uh, the Bible tells us in Matthew seven fifteen, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. So we got to test people. We got to make sure uh, by getting, by knowing the word of God, by, by reading and studying it along with, uh, as we hear them to make sure uh, that they're not leading us astray. It's also there in verse one, false teachers secretly uh, teach destructive heresies. Uh, as we look there at what it says, <clears throat> there be, shall be false teachers among you who privily, in other words, who secretly shall bring in damnable heresies. <clears throat> uh, they teach destructive heresies by doing it uh, not kind of out in the open. You know, they, they are deceptive. They, they quietly, they seek, uh, slip in uh, uh, things into the doctrine. Uh, they teach their destructive heresies in the church and, and among the believers, but they like to slip it in. Uh, <clears throat> the false teachers also uh, are, are not out in the world. They're, they're in the church. That's where they're trying to uh, destroy uh, the truth of God's word. Uh, they join churches, they uh, become outstanding citizens and people of the church, and next thing you know, we appoint them as leaders. Uh, and, but you, 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 again, we, we always got to test our people, make sure that they're bringing it from the Word of God. But know that word heresy is plural. What does, the, what does heresy uh, being referred to here? Any teaching that goes contrary to the Scripture, to the Word of God. So we got to make sure uh, that we're being taught everything from the Word of God. Any teaching that goes contrary to the scripture, that is the word of God uh, or of the Bible. They, 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 this is clearly what is meant for the uh, exhortation here is just been given. Take heed to the word of prophecy to the scripture there in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. So again, the point is, any teaching that is contrary to God's word, it's destructive. It will tear up churches. It will destroy lives. Uh, it destroys God's purpose for the church and it destroys the lives of the people of the church. So teaching that is our, our, that are contrary to God's word, again, are destructive and we must make sure uh, that it does not happen. Uh, no matter how personal a person may be, no matter how much we may like that person, if they are not teaching the truth, it's heresy, it's wrong. It should not happen. A heretic is a man or a woman who believes what he wishes to believe instead of accepting the truth of God, which he must believe. What was happening in the case of Peter's people here, or Peter's day? Uh, there were certain men who claimed to be prophets and were persuading men to believe the things that they wished to be true. That's what was happening. Uh, they kind of slipped into the church. <coughs> uh, they become kind of honorable and respected, and next thing you know, they become teachers, and, then, and they're teaching false stuff. So the most tragic thing, tragic heresy, is the heresy that denies the Lord too. That's, that's terrible. Jesus Christ has bought us and he has paid the supreme price for us. He gave all that he, that he is and all that he has, even his life, in order to buy us out of our sin debt. So we owe our lives to him. We owe everything to him. So we should not be, or should not allow any kind of heresy or false teaching pull us away from that. What does it mean to deny Christ? Well, it means to deny that Jesus is the son of God. That he left heaven above and he came to earth uh, for you and I. That he, uh, that he doesn't love us, in, the, uh, in other words, uh, enough to, uh, to do that. But that, that's the denial there. They, they deny Jesus is the Savior of the world. They, he lives a, they deny the fact that he lived a perfect life. So many today want to claim that him and Mary Magdalene had an affair. Uh, that's just not true. Uh, it's just a, another lie to deny the, uh, the, the deity of Christ. But... Uh, to die in Christ, uh, uh, 
uh, to deny that Christ died for us. They want to uh, deny that, that he died. And the, and the biggest thing is that he rose again, that he come up out of that grave. They deny his death and his burial and his resurrection. Uh, they deny that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father now, uh, uh, receiving all the worship and the glory and the honor. But we can go on and on uh, and look in the scriptures, the list of, of uh, the things. But again, to deny any teaching of scripture about Christ is to deny, to deny Christ. So this is the very point that Peter is making. We must take heed of uh, to the scriptures, for the scriptures have been given by God Himself, and they are uh, and, and and they are the truth. And if they are being uh, perverted, then uh, that's false teaching, and it could lead to damnation. So false teaching shall be destroyed swiftly. We see here in scripture. Note that being destructive. Uh, they bring destruction upon themselves. <clears throat> Nobody's fault but their own. They have the, uh, the freedom. They have the opportunity. They have the choice to teach the truth. But they choose to teach a lie. They, they want to do something to appease and draw people to them. They want recognition. They want power. They want authority. Uh, but it says here that the, uh, or, or the ideal of swift is both certain and quick. Now, well, when the judgment comes, there will be no uh, discussion about it. Uh, about the matter. No question, no leniency, no mercy, no love. There will be pure justice, swift, immediate judgment, and destruction upon them. And that word destruction means to lose one's will, well-being, to, uh, to, to be ruined, to be wasted, to perish, to be destroyed. That's what it means. The Bible tells us in Matthew 13, excuse me, Matthew 13, 41 through 42, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and that which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Boy, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm not in their shoes. I, I'm glad I heed to the word of God. Next thing we see in verse 2, false teachers mislead many people. False teachers encourage people to live immoral lives. This is what... Uh, uh, by pernicious ways or pernicious means, uh, the ways of immorality, uh, uh, the ways of flesh. Uh, how do false teachers lead men to live worldly and fleshly lives? False teachers say that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, they take the love of, of God and they twist it. That's what they do. They say that God is so loving that he would never condemn a man to eternal hell. You know what that tells people? You can live like you want to. God loves you. You can just do what you want to, live like you want to. You're not going to hell. Don't live in fear. You see, all that's a lie. False teachers take the grace of God and the faith and they pervert it. They say that a person must believe in Christ. Yes, that's right. But false teachers add that once we believe, we're okay for, for forever. And, and, and in return, we can do whatever we want to. We just, just go out, have fun, and live. And you know, God's going to forgive you. Everything's all right. It's not true. False teachers say that God accepts us even if we live like the devil and, the, and live after the world in the flesh. False teachers, they want to make you think that faith exists without ever producing fruit, that a person can believe in Jesus, and that's it. In other words, you believe that, that, that Jesus was, oh yeah, I believe he, he was the son of God, uh, but, but believe without repentance, believe without a changed life, breathe, uh, believe without separating from the world, uh, believe without denying and and controlling the flesh, believe without following Christ, that's not true belief. False teachers say that God loves and, uh, and graces are so inexhaustible that a man can do whatever he wants to and God's going to forgive him. So the results of this teaching, of course, is the, uh, is, is the license to sin. It tells people, just do what you want to. But it's not true. A man never has to worry about being rejected by God according to them. Romans 16, 18 says, For they that are set serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So many people are being deceived today, and it scares me and it breaks my heart. False teachers cause the name of Christ to be abused. They cause people to speak evil of God, Christ, and the church. The very name of God is blasphemed because of uh, 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 hypocrisy or uh, hypoc can't say the word uh, because of the living and the false professions of these hypocrites uh, how often we hear 
comments such as those hypocrites. People look at those hypocrites, those people who, oh, well, they do whatever they want to during the week and they go to church and they think there's something, they're hypocrites. Hmm. It is because of false prophecy that people are being led to think that they can live wherever they want to and just believe or just go to church and everything's fine. It's all hunky-dory, but it's not. We've got to give Christ our heart, our life, our souls. Verse 3, false teachers exploit people. They use people just like they use merchandise for their own ends. In other words, that's the biggest thing about false teachers. They want people to serve them, to worship them, to honor them, to lift them up, to make them think that they're something. They're are, they are in the church ministering and teaching, but they are covetous, full of greed, and full of lust. It's all about them. What is it that, what is it that they are coveting? It's, it's, again, it's popularity, recognition, leadership, attention, a following, fame. But these teachers is often more interested in being popular and having people accept them than they are of ministering to the needs of the people and sharing them <clears throat> with them the truth of God. They are more concerned with the people following them, thinking them to be good teachers and preachers and whatever. Acts 20, 30 says, Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Boy, how it's happening today. Now we'll go to verses 3 through 9. False teachers shall be judged and destroyed. Man, God really, or Jesus really gets it here. Or uh, First Peter, Second Peter, excuse me. Peter here really lays down the law here. I like this. Upon earth, even many see that false teachers goes on and on forever without ever being corrected or it seems like it. But no matter how successful or prosperous a teacher, a false teacher may seem to be, judgment does not linger. It is not idle. It is going to happen. The damnation of false teachers has not fallen asleep. The day is coming when all the false teachers will pay for their teaching destructive heresies. They will be damned and they will, that is destroyed because they did not teach the truth of Christ and the God's word. <clears throat> God did not spare the angels. Think about it. God did not spare the angels who sinned. He cast them down to hell as we see there in verse 4. For God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into hell, delivered them in, into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Mm. In the distant past, Satan was apparently the highest created being ever created by God. And at that time, his name was Lucifer. But he did what so many people have done and are doing today. He chose to go his own way, to do his own thing. He chose to rebel against God. And he led a host of angels to follow him, to rebel against God. And so therefore, God judged him and cast him for, uh, from his exalted position into hell. And the point is this. Even angels were cast down into hell and chained with darkness. And God is reserving them for eternal judgment. If God judged such glorious beings as Lucifer and the angels... How much more will he judge man, especially if they are teaching false doctrines and misleading the people? Hmm. I would not want to be in their shoes. God did not spare the old world as we see here. My goodness, the world had be, uh, became so wicked. Wickedness prevailed in, in the minds and the heart of the people. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. He destroyed the whole world of the ungodly by a flood. God had no choice. His righteous uh, demand that, that, that he judge the world of the ungodly. And he did. God sent a flood upon the earth covering the world and all the ungodly. All those who rebelled were destroyed. But no, there was one family saved. A, a preacher and his family he preached the righteousness of God and all the other preachers and the priests and the false prophets, they perished on that day. But not Noah. He lived and he preached the truth of God and his word. So the point is this. If God judged and destroyed the whole world of the ungodly, he will certainly judge and destroy a false teacher. Also, we see that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. God caused an explosion, a, a, a combustion, a fire that fell upon Sodom and Gomorrah. 
The cities were turned into ashes, according to the word here. The cities were made an example to all to who live ungodly lives. That's what it's about. The whole reason for the judgment and instruction was twofold. The citizens were living filthy, immoral, and unjust lives. The sin and the shame of the citizens were uh, disturbing the, the heart of Lot. They were so much sin and shame that Lot's heart was distressed and, and tortured to see the law of God violated so much. Everyone in the city was judged and destroyed except one man, Lot. And note why he was saved, because he was righteous. So the point is this, if God judged and destroyed two great cities and all the people in them, he will certainly judge and destroy a false teacher. God knows how to deliver the godly and reserve, as he says here, the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Note what it is that God delivers the, the godly from temptation, trials, and all temptations and trials of life. So you see, there's no excuse for false teachers preaching and teaching false doctrine. No excuse for, uh, for anyone to, to, uh, to fear other preachers or teachers or, or other men within his church, nor to shy away from the truth. For God knows how to meet our needs. Just keep following the Lord. Don't fall for trickery. Don't fall for lies. Don't be afraid to upset someone. You follow God's word. God delivered Noah and Lot both through the most trying oppositions and ungodliness that was going on. So we have no excuse as a church. We have no excuse as his children of God. We got to continue to follow the Lord no matter what the world does. God will help us. He will bless us. He will lead us and he will guide us children. God also knows how to keep the ungodly until the day of judgment and doom. And doom. All false teachers shall be judged and doomed. Folks, I want to tell you something. We think, man, it seems like they, they got it made. They're, they're not living right and everything works out for them. I'm going to tell you something. One day they got to stand before God. And they're going to, it's going to be payday then. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul, body, and hell. We ought to fear the Lord. We got to walk in reverence of the Lord. And we got to walk with him every day. And we got to hold true to this precious word of God. And make sure the people that are sharing the word uh, that we are listening to is sharing the truth and not misleading us. I hope you know Jesus. You know, there's a lot of people that's been misled in this world. From a very early age, They've been misled and they don't know the Lord. They don't know the truth. And because of that, they're going to miss heaven. I hope and pray that the truth of God's word has gotten to your heart. And I pray it gets to every heart. Because God said, it's not my will that any shall perish. But there's going to be many perish because of false doctrines. There's a lot of lies out there. But there is one truth. Hold on to God's word. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed this Bible study. Let us end with a prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your love. God, watch over our families. Help us, Lord, to stay true to your word. And Father, just we pray for the lost world. We pray for those who are being deceived by those who are teaching and preaching a lie. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.